How's it going everybody? So today we're going to talk about large format print settings. So I've been playing with large format printers for a uh, bit now. We design them and I want to talk about a part here and how I got to these settings and how you can get to them too. I might even upload this profile. Uh, but it's kind of unique so I'm not sure if this exactly will be what you're looking for but it'll it'll put you in the direction if you're wanting to print large things quickly so this piece will be a piece to a uh, subwoofer this is going to be an inner curve um, to a large subwoofer box and the goal here is we want to print this thing and we want it to be really strong and we're also <clears throat> but we don't want to spend um, all the time and money on printing it solid, but we essentially want a solid product. We want something as, as solid as, as some of the densest wood. So what we're going to do here is, in my settings on how I get to where it's at now, we're doing a 0.6 nozzle, 0.35 layer height, with a one line width. And how I get to this one line width is you generally do layer height plus uh, nozzle diameter equals line width. Now I punched it out a little bit more because I just wanted to do more. Um, I'm doing a two wall line count which I want you to start visualizing what some of these settings do and how they're working together because um, this is how I'm going to get a really strong print out of this. So we have a two wall line count okay and then we have alternate extra wall. So you're gonna see the infill go in and out so here's that extra wall and then the infill is on the outside of that extra wall and then on the next layer the infill is on the inside <clears throat> so it's two walls three walls two walls three walls with the infill stitching in and out of the wall so this is going to be a th essentially a three two four wall um, part um, essentially four walls of you know, three, four, three, four, three, four. That's what it's switching in between, stitching that, uh, stitching that infill into the walls. Um, as we go down the line here, I'm doing zero on the top layer. So that means when this part finishes, it's going to finish like this. Now this is a keyed part, so there actually will be a part that's going to fit inside this one down to where the infill is. And what we're going to be doing is taking a resin, a two-part epoxy. Um, with some aggregate probably and mixing it and pouring it down these channels um, so we're going to backfill all these channels to make the part extra strong we have five on the bottom layer which should be good enough I did a lines top bottom pattern uh, extra skin wall count none of that was important infill density so this is kind of how I got to this interesting infill here was a 0.6 with zigzag connect infill polygons which is important so connecting infill polygons actually saves some time off of this and what's happening is is this whole infill path is now one continuous layer it doesn't stop and pick up anywhere it's making a constant one path there should be less uh, <clears throat> retractions and travel movements with this connect infill polygons um, so this is a new setting that I'm actually trying on this print for the first time. Um, but it did save some time. It saved over about 40 minutes on a 12-hour print. Um, so that's really cool. Printing temperature, I got it 210. We're printing this in PLA. Like I said, we're going to backfill this with resin. So I'm not concerned with any heat or anything else. Um, we're going to see that resin should end up holding the shape on the inside just fine. Um, the flow. So this is kind of important. Like When I started printing this and at the speed I was printing it at, I realized that the lines weren't connecting enough, so I had to up the flow, especially when you start doing this this wide line width and tall layer height. Sometimes you've got to do more flow, so I'm up to 25% more flow already, and this could probably maybe even be to 30%. I'm not sure I'm, I'm viewing the print, which we'll go look at here in a moment. Now, I put the print speed at 95, and it was printing pretty decently at this, but I did see some issues as I was printing. Um, so I've slowed the speed down by 25%. Uh, or by 20% on the printer right now. So we're probably sitting at about a 80, 75-ish average of speed. I'm always doing my travel speed a little high. That's actually not that high at 120. Uh, initial layer speed of 47.5. That's actually a little fast. I probably should have printed it a little slower 
but it printed just fine on the first layer. Um, retraction and stuff, this will all be kind of standard cooling, standard, brim standard. I do have arc welder on, and you'll find arc welder in Marketplace. Um, so this will make all of these outer curves, like this curve right here, will all be one toolpath instead of like toolpath, 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 toolpath. Tool um, so that'll be pretty neat there. But yeah, <clears throat> this is how you can get this a, a large print like this. So this is at what is this? 300 by 175 by 138. So this <clears throat> wouldn't necessarily be considered super large format, but this piece is actually two pieces. So we're printing this twice. So we're doing a a 600 millimeter part here. And um, that's kind of the point, that 600 millimeters does break into the large format size um, and, si and, and type of printing. And all the settings I'm doing here would be the same as if it was 600 or, or higher. Um, but I had found some difficulties, and I'll even share this in another video, of uh, large format printing with certain shapes and, and the issues that it can cause. Um, so I think this will help in that with it not being 600 millimeters tall, we're going to have less issues as it gets taller because I believe we were having some either skyscrapering or some other type of mechanical issue with the printer um, that I'll go over. But this is uh, building it in two pieces like this that will then slot together is a part of the reason is in hopes to fix some of the issues that I was having with printing it all in one piece. Um, Wait a second, where'd the bottom go? Oh, I actually had clicked up from the bottom. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? But yeah, so let's look at the part real quick. So we're printing this on our Saint Smart over here. Uh, Cortex Y. So, yeah, see on that travel, we are getting a little bit of spider webbing, which is some of what we're wanting to get rid of. That's a little annoying, but overall this is looking pretty solid yeah most of the line, it looks like the majority of the lines are connecting pretty well and we have to remember on here when we're seeing little gaps like this especially when it's on this interior one that's most likely because it's skipping wall layers so it's three layers four layers three layers four layers three layers four layers so that inner layer is going to be a little thin because you know it might not have a layer under it it's going to have a layer one layer under that um and as long as everything is printing good then then uh, you know that's actually good for the inner walls and then what will happen too is when we resin fill it that resin will seep in between those gaps too forming more of a structure into the wall as well. So I've got a nice solid wall that the resin's not going to seep through, but then some of that resin is going to seep into that like fourth wall that's on the interior and make it extra strong. And I also did a double in infill wall. I didn't go over that setting, but if you notice, it's making two passes on the infill. Um, so even though this is a 6% infill wall, it kind of sectioned it in a way that we really like. Um, and I also did 90 degrees, so normally there would be a couple of these walls going this way. And what we did is we just turned them all so that they're all facing the same way. And that gave us nice little channels that, uh, that we can backfill once this goes tall. So that's one half of it. And then here's the other half of it. Both running the same exact settings, same infill, same uh, 3D printer. Using the same filament, we're using King Rune's Silver. PLA, which is uh, quite affordable and and uh, pretty decent quality. I've been overall happy with it. So I think this is pretty cool. I think we're going to really like these settings. And uh, stay tuned for the next video on issues with large format printing and uh, what some of that can entail. So have a good day, guys. Like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate any comments and uh, communication you'll have below. Ask me, uh, request any videos. We're also going to be doing a video on this uh, TPU here. This P Well, this isn't even TPU. That's the P flexible PLA. So stay tuned for the flexible PLA versus TPU video that will be coming out here today as well. And we will see you in the next video. Peace.